Good evening. This is Straight Talk with Eugene Chan. Our guest this evening is the chairman of the Hong Kong Productivity Council, Mr. Sunny Tan. Mr. Tan is currently a member of the Legislative Council, representing the textiles and garment functional constituency, and senior advisor to Lun Tai Holdings Limited, a leading fashion and lifestyle apparel and accessories manufacturer for which he has served for more than two decades. He is also Executive Deputy Chairman of the Federation of Hong Kong Industries and Executive Vice Chairman of the Hong Kong General Chamber of Textiles. We have invited Mr. Ten to tell us if Hong Kong industries are a thing of the past. Welcome, Sunny. Thank you. Thank you, Eugene. Sunny, um, the, Ch the Chief Executive Policy Address was um, out last in the last month, and he actually places quite a significant emphasis on the concept of new industrialization. It says to promote the industrialization and to do this by adopting an industry oriented approach. So, can you tell us more about what actually new industrialization is to the viewers? All right. Um, in fact, Hong Kong does have industries. And, uh, but what we have been doing has been more relating to maybe the light industries. Uh, but less on the emerging industries. What the chief executives and the government is trying to do is to have a balance applying technology, INT, um, to our, uh, our existing um, industries as, as well as the emerging ones. And mm -hmm. we are going into two directions. So how do we apply the upgrading technology support to bring up what we have and to develop the new ones. The new ones are more like maybe applied science, advanced manufacturing, advanced material, life science, so on and so forth. Right, when the CE said new industrialization, it kind of give people an impression, they may not be correct, that all our old industries are gone, then Hong Kong will now have totally different new industries. Is that, is that correct? No, no, no. Because um, we always have demand because it comes from consumer. So when there's a consumer demand, we have an industry. We, we all still wear clothes, we all still buy toys, for example, right? So new industrialization means that we are trying to um, uh, apply new technology. That is the first part. How do we use the uh, I4.0, industrial 4.0 digitalization? How do we apply uh, AI, artificial intelligence and robotics? But at the same time, this is more on the technology element. But re new industrialization also requires certain smart and uh, clean or new newness, uh, green initiatives. So new industrialization needs the process to be cleaner, uh, more uh, sustainable, mm -hmm. greener. So all, this is the key elements to be new industrialization. Right. When you, with all that new sort of initiatives, does it going to be costing more to the industries themselves? Um, I think the key is how do we apply technology to bring up the efficiency, all right. right? For example, how do we use robotics um, to replace our workers, but we, we use fewer workers, but we make the workers to be more productive, as right. an example. Right. They also use the term called an industry-oriented approach. What exactly is that? I think different major industries will have uh, different requirements when it comes to the type of technology that's required. Um, the traditional industry may require more on the uh, automation, uh, in different process, in service process, as well as in the production process. But on the emerging side, that may require a lot more sophisticated uh, production lines. So uh, it's a little bit different uh, from one uh, to the other. Right, when you're saying they're using technology to help it do more productive, I think inevitably some of the old industries may be sort of surpassed or there could be new ones, what we call revitalized. Can you give us some examples? Um, I think uh, this is a very important process or natural progression for each industry. Take the um, take our example of um, textile apparel. I think in the past 100 years, the process continues to evolve and improve. Technology kept on being applied, but then there's still factories around. So maybe I can give you certain examples in this mm -hmm, area. Mm -hmm. um, in Hong Kong, recently government funded um, through a reindustrialization fund to uh, support a new factory being set up uh, with production line in making what we call whole garment sweaters. If you imagine, um, sweaters before, uh, you knit each panel and then you sew it together. Right. But now it's one piece of garment comes straight from one machine, fully automatic. 
So this is an application of the digital technology and also certain robotics related elements to produce. And the workers would not require to do a lot of the nitty gritty work, but it's more about um, the, the supervision and also the maintenance of the entire shop floor. Mm -hmm. So Chairman, being the leading Hong Kong, Hong Kong PC at the moment, what exactly is your organization helping our government to this, to this new industrialization? Um, we carry a very important role uh, in the policy address in promoting new industrialization. Uh, the reason it's HKPC, Hong Kong Productivity Council, we are serving as like a catalyst to industrial development. Uh, we are here to support the industry where we try to help to identify and to resolve pain points. Right. So as we are going through the industrial, new industrialization, we are helping different industries to see where are the pain points and how do we use technology, for example, to upgrade, to resolve that pain point so that we can move on to the new industrialization. But at the same time, uh, for us to support the new industrialization, we need technology, we need people, because once we apply technology, we need to develop the people. And number three, where do they get the money to do that? So how do we support them to, uh, uh, to apply government fundings to make it working? Right. So what, do you have any primary focus areas under your direction with the Hong Kong PC at the moment? Um, the key direction is we are really following the policy address in terms of the development of the key uh, emerging technologies mm -hmm. and emerging industries. Those are the key ones that we're working on. For example, we're working on a uh, security device production company for two years already. Right. Uh, we are trying to help them to uh, improve um, their workflow, applying additional robotics elements in there, uh, given the same um, factory size, we're able to double the capacity. But only capacity, but, but when it comes to output, that's even more. So that would be one example. But um, we, are, we also go back to the traditional industry. For example, there's a uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine supplement company. Right. Um, so we help them to uh, revamp the entire production process. In the past, there's all a lot of um, handwork, okay, labor intensive. But now we put in production lines, automatically uh, bottling, labeling. Um, the labor went down by 90%, but production right. output goes up. Right. So, Chairman, when you mentioned the term new emerging industries, I'm sure the viewers would say that sounds very exciting. But do we have that many new emerging industries in Hong Kong? I mean, are Hong Kong that innovative? Oh, yes, we do. Um, a lot of times we, we hear a lot of very good, um, I would say, news um, from universities to say that we have a lot of different inventions, innovations. That is what we call from zero to one, the basic research. But in fact, we are also having a, uh, have a very good, we call applied research. And the example of HKPC, we are the key driver in applied research to bring technology to the ground, to the market. And we have been supporting a lot of Hong Kong companies in Hong Kong and in Greater Bay Area, other cities in GBA, to uh, to upgrade their production facilities or their research capability. And that has been the core. And you will see more on the emerging side. You can see more in, for example, in the science park. There are a lot of factory space. We've been uh, working with them very closely to, uh, to bring up new facilities as well as uh, upgrading certain facilities in the existing industrial areas. Right, Chairman, you know, the title of the show tonight is um, Are Hong Kong Industries a Thing of the Past? And seeing that you are enhancing public awareness, I've, I've looked up your work, and then you were launching a TV mini series coming up calling the Hong Kong Got Industries. So, do you agree that most people in Hong Kong will feel that Hong Kong has no more industries, but now a time to sort of revitalize them? Um, I would say Hong Kong does have industry to start with, and that has been a key pillar in the past couple of decades. But in the past 10 years, I would say, People might be more focused on the financial services, maybe into other services, professional services, and also uh, maybe properties, tourism. But it doesn't mean that we, 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 we did not have the, the, the industry side. The industrial development is there, but it has changed because the labor costs went up in China, in Hong Kong. So the production is really in, in the entire ASEAN country plus China, while Hong Kong is still serving as the main hub. What we are doing, we are providing industrial service. If we look at the service industry in Hong Kong, uh, it takes up a big chunk of our GDP. Mm -hmm. But then 
within service, about 40%. It's from industrial service. And that, uh, for uh, FHKI, Federation of Hong Kong Industry and Hong Kong U, we did a survey. We did a research on it. It's about 40% of the service GP GDP accounted for um, with industrial. So mm -hmm. it's there. And what we are doing now is we are reinventing ourselves. I mean, every couple of years, we got we to gotta do some, make some big changes yes. and to upgrade ourselves. So now we're at the pivotal point that we are applying technology, we are going into new industrialization to bring it up and to align our policy address direction and to align our country. I mean, from Beijing, the central government, there's also a new industrialization policy and direction. So we want to align and HKPC, we are here to support. Right, Chairman, one last question before we go to the break. When you're talking about all this technology, you're trying to revitalize them, that means we're relying on the technology. Does that mean that we're going to have fewer jobs for our population, for workforce? Um, I think it's more about um, switching to right. a higher value added job because um, I think that has been evolving in the past decades. We just keep moving on. So we need to reskill our labor force to enable them to carry a new job. All right, let's take a break now. And viewers, stay tuned. We will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. And we have Mr. Sunny Tan on the show this evening. And he has been talking to us about the new industrialization initiatives in Hong Kong. So, Chairman, in the first half, you have told us, firstly, the, industry, the industries in Hong Kong are still well and alive. Then you, we are all trying to revitalize it and make it more efficient with the new uh, INT. And you also talked to, talk to us about your, your initiatives with the Hong Kong PC. So, I'm sure the viewer is going to ask you, if I'm having a small business or even medium size, how are we going to be approach, so approaching Hong Kong PC and get some assistance? I mean, it sounds that all the work you have said so far is going to cost a bit of money. <laughs> um, what we see in the industry, it's uh, we at the pivotal point where we need to reinvent ourselves because we have been uh, quite successful in the past being a middle person, being in the uh, front in uh, liaising between the West and the East uh, in the industrial side. But now we need to apply technology. But then when we go through technology, we need a few things. It's really the technology, the money, and the people. So HKPC, we are there to support, especially for we call SME, small, medium enterprises. Right. So uh, we have technology on hand. Uh, we don't really develop major technology, we try to identify technologies in the market so that we can do it fast, but with our own in-house technology to make it happen for the industry purpose. Number two, it's we train people how to do it. Number three, we work with them, with the government to identify the right funding scheme. Because this is important, because the, the industry needs certain funding to upgrade. Mm -hmm. So we are there to provide our professional advice to them to identify the right areas to, to improve and to write funding and to train the people. Right. Uh, all the funding from the government, I mean, are there any private enterprises who are happy to invest? Um, the, the funding is really from the government, primarily from the, we call ITIB, Innovation Technology Industri Industry Bureau side. That is for the upgrading and the development of the emerging industries. Uh, on the private sectors, I would say that is more relating to maybe the VC investments. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's more on the uh, science part, cyber port. They are the one to incubate, to nurture all these companies. I would say that our, our SMEs, in fact, it's a strong base of um, startups. Think about it. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily need to term only a technology company, a small company called startups. Hong Kong, all these SMEs, we have a big pool of startups waiting to be developed. So we are here to support our SMEs and hopefully we will see more and more very, very uh, competitive companies coming from this new era. Right. Um, since we, we're talking about all this new INT, I mean, the term digital economy does come up a lot in the media recently. Maybe you can tell us from your understanding what it is and how developed do you think Hong Kong's digital economy is currently? Um, I would say digital economy, it's evolving mm -hmm. and evolving very, very quickly. When we look at uh, how uh, China, 
our, our motherland um, has been developing really straight from the consumer side down to the institutional side, banking, um, it's all digitalized. And in Hong Kong, I think we're a little bit behind, but mm -hmm. we are really playing a very strong catch up. Uh, first start with the government. The government has been working on the smart city plan, mm -hmm. uh, working on the I'm smart. All these are infrastructure that is required to make the digitalization working. And we as HAPC, we have been trying to be the middle person to facilitate all these processes. At the same time, on the consumer front or the platform front, uh, we are also working very closely uh, with the key players. Because I don't think we need to reinvent anything new, but we need to know where to apply, how to apply. And how do we bring our industry now, mm -hmm. back to the industry, how do we bring our industry to adapt to the new way of the digital commerce or digitalization in business? Because the digitalization has been fundamentally changing how a consumer goes in shop. Okay, it could be a consumer individual or, or, or even a business when it goes into um, making a purchase or procurement. So it gives an opportunity to us because as an industry, as a factory in the past, we are trying to sell to a brand, to a reseller, eventually selling to the consumer. Mm -hmm. But now being in a factory, we have the ability and opportunity to use digitalization, e-commerce, to go straight to the customer. Look into uh, now all, all these e-commerce business, let's look into the live stream, okay? Um, it's really shortening all this inefficiency in the supply chain and allow us as a factory, as industry, to, to be more competitive than before. But it requires certain change and technology upgrade. Right, Chairman, that sounds like basically um, Hong Kong PC is really promoting this kind of digital economy. And what do industries need to do to be able to be part of this digital economy? I mean, it sounds very exciting. It sounds like that's the, the future. What can they do? Um, HKPC is with our name, productivity. So we try right. to help everybody to improve their productivity. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to um, all the factories or, or, or the industry players, um, I think we need to have the right mindset. Um, the industry will continue to evolve and improve. So we need to have the mindset to, um, to, to adopt. Mm -hmm. to adopt technology, to adopt the new way of um, doing business. It will not go back, it will only go forward. So by being proactive in trying new technology, applying something new, also engaging the youth, right. okay? Hire our young people, very talented people in Hong Kong, bring them in and work with them, to be honest, learn from them. Right. And then with the technology and the government support, I think that's the way to go. Right, since you're talking about all this new way forward, uh, and uh, AI is another term that we often hear. I will use the word prominent topic in the society recently, especially with the introduction of uh, the um, advanced language mo models like ChatGPT. So what is the current state of the AI industry in Hong Kong from your view as well? Um, I think it's uh, at the, I, was, I would not say infancy stage, but then we, we, we are catching up. Right. We, all, we all know that, for example, some of the developed countries uh, are much stronger, but then China is still not bad, making a very, very good um, progress. Um, but for us in Hong Kong, I think we have to be very careful that uh, we do have our own identity and mission because we are under the one country's two system. So as Hong Kong, we need to play a very proactive and important role in developing AI in the international arena, but at the same time, how do we work with China, our motherland, to develop our own version of AI? And now, um, to make it working, we need to have a few uh, essential elements. So number one is, do we have enough power, okay, AI power, to, 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 to support all these generative AI, for example? We need right. a lot of power. So the government has been taking the lead with industry to really uh, make it happen, we see very uh, uh, good progress. So I'm quite confident with it. Right. Uh, number two, it's talent, okay? So I would say that uh, with one country, two system, again, being in Hong Kong, we are able to attract a lot of good, very, very good, very prominent professors and academic and researchers um, to be in Hong Kong to make it happen. 
And number three, I would say that it's, it's really the general uh, application that we need to have um, across different industries to make it working. I would say that uh, it is in progress. So I would say that we have some way to go, but we are heading the right direction. We have full government support, and I'm I'm seeing in a very very positive way. Right. Just now, you, just now you have listed out the major challenges the AI industries are facing, and if Hong Kong is going to be the, an INT hub under the 14th Five Year Plan. So it looks like we have to move in that direction for sure. So how is Hong Kong PC under your leadership going to assist that? I know I mean, there are other players in the, in the field, but I'm sure having productivity, as you rightly said so, is the right body to increase our uh, productivity. So how will you lead our association in, do that, in doing that? Uh, definitely, it's very, very important for us. Um, what we do, it's we call it the industrial AI. Because right. it could be individual using a ChatGPT, but then industrial AI is what we use in terms of how we uh, uh, gather all the big data to make the right decision along the manufacturing process, production process. For example, um, how do we use AI to uh, estimate the demand so that we work on the right level of inventory at different level, from raw material all down to the finished goods? Uh, how do we use AI to identify consumer demand? How do we use AI to uh, work on all the production process to go through to have it right optimization? One very simple example, right? I have some raw materials and I have some trucks. How do I make the right delivery to the right factory at the right time mm -hmm. with the lowest cost? I need a lot of data. True. So all this AI implementing into industrial side is something that we need to support our industries to make it more efficient. The problem now is a lot of companies might not think AI is suitable for them because they're not that big. So we are here to develop and identify the right module, right software applications for them to use at the right cost. And if needed, we try to work with the government to, to, to give them some financial support to make it working. Right, Chairman, I'm afraid we all have to leave it there. And thank you, Sunny, for updating us with all the latest developments in this area. It is good to know that Hong Kong industries are far from being a thing of the past and in fact are an important part of Hong Kong's future. We certainly look forward to further developments in this field. Allow me to share a quote from Fei Fei Li, a scientist. If our era is the next industrial revolution, as many claim, AI is surely one of its driving forces. Have a good evening and see you next week.